swapping turbos like madmen here. Actually, Tony is. But on today's episode, we change out our 30R, put the 35R, and of course, we do more tuning and wrap this thing up on the dyno. That was the quickest turbo removal I've pretty much seen or done. For what, 20 minutes there at that? Wasn't too bad. Yeah. So the 30R is off. Next up, 35R. Of course, it's gonna be twice as difficult to put it back in. Because <laughs> it's always easy coming out. Not so good coming back in. The name of the game here is to get this all lined up as close to what as close to as the 30R was clocked so that we don't have to do any type of clocking while it is on the car because goddamn it's tight under there. Bro, why is there no coolant running through the turbo? That's because we don't have any coolant. None of the water. Yeah, well. This is, well, you clearly should use a different turbo then if you have a coolant. Yeah. Well. And there you have it. A GTX 35R Garrett Turbo is installed. It took us a little bit longer than expected, but actually, it was pretty pain free for Tony to get this sucker back in. I helped like Dave usually helps me, which is about 5% of the work, right? Walk me through what we're gonna do here, Tony. So we got the new turbo installed now, new and what, what's, the, what's the changes that you need to do for editing? Most likely, the, the V's are yeah. gonna, gonna go up, up top. Yeah. So see how it's kind of noses off, up top, kind of, kind of curves back down. Yeah, okay. It's gonna, it's likely gonna go flatter and carry better. So there's enough closed loop control to fix that. Yeah. So I'll likely, I'm gonna take go back to wastegate boost. Yeah. Make a hit on wastegate boost and log where the fueling goes and trim the fueling based on that. So that'll be the, the first thing to do? Yep. Cool. So I, don't think, I don't think you've changed enough to matter but to be a huge effect right now. Yeah, I got you. But we'll see. We will. That's what a different turbo makes, huh? That's wastegate spring versus, well, it looks like we're creeping quite a bit. Oh yeah, at the end. Interesting. The boost at the end is air higher, but we picked up, you know? We picked up how much? 60. 60 wheel, just yeah. by changing that turbo. 65 on that. Um, I'm kind of curious as to why we're creeping so much. We didn't, uh, Wastegate was untouched, right? Right, we didn't touch the wastegate. But you can see the change in power is super significant. We are losing a little bit of spool, but Tony might be able to clean that up in there. Yeah, that's that's actually puzzling to me too. Well, uh, what it could be is that header design, if it's at all problematic, um, having less back pressure is going to make it the exhaust not want to follow that awkward path through the wastegate. So that could be the additional creep. With a lot of back pressure, it's it's an easier I path see, out. With right, less so back the pressure. headers are too small. Uh, like not the, the header, header, header but the, the wastegate location. Okay, okay. Wastegate location, like it's kind of a, yep. a trip to get out there, right? Yep. It could be just a uh, header design flaw. But yeah, look at that. <laughs> yeah, that's. So even though, let's see it. Even though there's a 5250, we've got three psi less boost, and we're making the same power. Yeah. And it's kind of just, it's we better. can already tell this is the better size oh, yeah. turbo yeah. for this setup. I, I knew that before we yeah. started. <laughs> well, we're just proving it now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> We got boost on, and what else? Just boost control on? Is that like a 
mud flipping. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. First I got that is pretty good. Uh, yeah, right, 17 pounds. Yeah, so 17 pounds is making 450 foot pounds. Yeah, of so I mean, like, we're actually at the peak torque number areas, so peak torque was around 5 grand. So at 5 grand, our boost is within half pound or so yeah. before. Yeah. Likes that it likes that breathing. Definitely likes to breathe. But it's breathing a little too much. I'm wondering if it is the clutch that's slipping. Uh, it's you know it's possible. But I would expect this thing to be I mean I have it. I've kind of stopped on time so. Well it's uh it's a pretty I think it's stage two. I can double check, but I think it's either 575 or 525 foot pounds of torque. We are close to that. So we probably are getting close to that, yeah. And you, you tell me, like, it's not broken in. Right, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you get heated and they'll, they'll start behaving, you know? Yeah. Um, let me, uh, Did that clear so up? That's squiggle. It's gone out of the fuel system. It's in the map sensor, so it is rever reversion in the intake. And um, the only thing we're gonna, only way we're gonna fix that is either find a different nipple to put the map sensor on, and see if it moves to a different spot, or get rid of it all together. Squiggly lines, we're getting a bit of clutch slip, and that's because we're getting very close to the max torque rating for the spec stage two clutch, which is 575 foot pounds, but that's not at the that's at the flywheel, not at the wheels. So realistically, we should, we're still about 40 foot pounds away from maxing it out. However, Tony, you said the clutch still needs to be broken in, which is probably what's causing it to slip prematurely. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. The way clutches work in most cases, they have like a bell curve of their operating range. And when they're fresh and new, they're low on that bell curve and they actually need little be seated just like rings or exactly, yeah. know, anything else. They need to be which seated is, and get happy in their location. Ideally, I should have broken this clutch in, driven around. Right. And, but and actually, most manufacturers just tell you to do that's so. That's right, they do. It's kind yeah. of a hard uh, thing to do when you have to get the car to this point before you can drive exactly. it. You know? Yeah, well, that's why we we figured, but we'll be able to work around it, right? Yeah, good deal. Alright, let's do this. people that's pretty damn good 465 foot pounds so it's coming up did it slip there I don't think so it did yeah still just a little bit Where will you see like it started slipping it right at 5200 RPM right at 5200 oh yeah Oh, uh, poor clutch. You can see, you can see in the see uh, the, the way the dyno's designed. This line should be 100% linear when everything's working right. Yeah. See this little hump right here? Yeah. That, that's a clutch slipping. Uh, I got you. So realistically, that that little bit of slippage work, it's not like it's getting smoked. It's just overrunning a little bit. You just know, it's enough, like, yeah, which you is know, probably breaking it in yeah. <laughs> aggressively and quickly. Let's hope. <laughs> is it an organic?
1,700 foot pounds. Oh my god, we're breaking the internet here. God damn it, I gotta deal with that again? Yeah, someone's gonna be like, oh my god. There you go. 455. So we're getting close. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna take much more than that. I kind of concur. up the dino session Tony thanks for all your hard work here why don't we uh, explain to the people what's going on all right so I got I got the four plots up here right yep. now um, da dot dash green uh, and uh, solid and dotted red yep are uh, wastegate and uh, basically all in the our peak boost target on 91 on the 3076 30, correct yeah. so you can see the wastegate on the gate it, it comes up and uh noses over makes around 300 and I need a new mouse <laughs> uh top side around 350 foot pounds of torque and 376 horsepower yeah adding boost in um uh, made 414 horsepower and 416 wow. foot pounds of torque. And that's just with boost control. That's yeah, impressive. Yeah, so this, uh, pressure graph wise, that is the um, red graph. Yeah, look at that. Versus the green graph. The green graph, yeah. So, so it's, obviously it's, more more boost, but at the same time, the ramp here is quite significant over the wastegate. Right. And this in the same plot, you see the difference between uh, 35R versus 30R. So if we're looking at, let's call it... Uh, since it's still ramping up pretty hard, let's look right here at 14 pounds. Yeah. We hit 14 pounds on the 35R at 3,300 RPM, and on the uh, on the 30R, excuse me, on the 35R we hit it at 3,600. So we lost about 300 300 uh, RPM of spool. But, but the but gains. <laughs> the gains are 100% worth it. So now we're talking about at that same boost level. Now again, this graph looks yeah, a little wonky. Yeah, the slipping it, clutch it would, up there, right? It would actually probably climb a little bit better and, and look cleaner. Um, uh -huh. But we got the slipping clutch, so we're, we're talking about a, a difference of uh, uh, 50 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah. Even though it looks like it's a huge difference, a real difference is only right here in this little area. In transition, it'll be noticeable. You'll feel the difference, but realistically, it starts separating in power so early yeah. on. By 3,800 RPM, we're climbing hard. Where so you're making so much more torque. Yep, and obviously since we're making more torque, we're also making way more power as well. So we we picked up 70, nearly 75 horsepower. Yeah. Uh, at the same boost level, anything slightly lower boost level. Now here's an interesting thing about it all is wastegate to wastegate. So let me hide the uh, other ones. So we'll do. So here's our boost graphs. Same wastegate spring. Same everything. We obviously have some creep. We have a six psi spring, uh, so realistically, the gate's starting to open right around here. Which, which is pretty good, twenty seven fifty. Yeah, so there's our there's mm -hmm. our separation right there. Is that three hundred rpm separation from here from here to here? Yeah. Um, but look what happens up top. We have a maximum creep of. Where's my green dot? <laughs> right, it's here. in the corner there. It disappeared. There so, you go. With no wastegate control, with no boost control, no additive, no nothing. We're picking up 5 PSI of boost on the 35R. At the top end, yeah. At the top end. And that's creep because it's a 6 PSI spring. Mm -hmm. So um, that uh, kind of tells a tale about your header. Yeah. The design is flawed a bit because it, we're, we're not bypassing enough uh, exhaust gases. Theoretically, if everything was optimal and perfect, if we have a 6 pound spring, this should come up it to should 6 hold pounds. 6 pounds. And stay at 6 pounds. Yeah. And it's not even close to that. It's actually more than doubling yeah. it. Actually heading towards tripling it. Mm -hmm. um, so what, uh, the reason it works better on the 30, the 30R, because the 30R turbine wheel is a bit more restrictive. You have more back, back pressure. pressure yeah. The more back pressure you have, the more likely it is it's going to go out to the path of least resistance, which is the gate in this case. Mm -hmm. If you have less back pressure on a 35R, it's a bigger wheel, flows better. Um, it it uh, doesn't want to go out the gate because it's a harder path. Exactly. So it's an interesting thing. Luckily, our peak boost target was about what it creeps to anyway, so, <laughs> so we're good. So we're good on that, yeah. But uh, you're not going to be able to do multiple boost levels yeah, <laughs> until that's you address okay. that. But I guess the consensus is the 35R is hands down the way to go 
pretty sure I told yeah. you that before we started. Yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> proof is in the dyno chart. So in, the, in this application, it's correct. I mean, in a four-cylinder, it may not be the optimal mm -hmm. choice. You may have you'll have a lot more lag, but in this application, you have yeah, to, like 300 RPM is really nothing. It's it's nominal. Yeah, you'll you'll feel it, but the thing is, by the time you get to 4,500 RPM, it's such a night and day difference. It's not big worth hit. It. Yeah, yeah. I have the keys. All right. Well, that is going to wrap up our tuning session. We made a total of 400 and I think 88, right? 488 wheel horsepower and 400, I think it was 66. 488, 466. Yep. 466 foot pounds of torque. So I'm really happy with that. The slipping clutch is not a big deal. It's just because it's brand new. So once I break it in, I may actually do some dynoing up in Toronto, test it out and we can see if we can, we'll probably make 500. Should we should be able to, yeah. Lower altitude, little yeah, air. yeah. So we'll try that, but that wraps up this episode. We've got one more left here in Arizona before I leave and head home. So make sure you stay tuned. If you guys want to support what we're up to here, you can check out our Patreon page. And if you don't, that's cool too. Yeah.